What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through Tuesday's night at NBA Slate. And this is always my, you know, the great time of year. I'm about to head up to my family's. Uh, got people coming in. There's going to be a quite a quite a few of us, and it's uh, I'm just trying to get healthy before I go up there because I don't want to get anybody sick. And uh, it's it's going to be a fun week with a lot of sports. And this is for you know for for my history. This is probably my most profitable week in general is Thanksgiving week between the Wednesday night. I usually I usually have a really good Wednesday night slate on the massive NBA slate, and I've done really well with the uh, Thursday slate. I also have come in the top five of the Millionaire Maker two of the last four years. So this is or two two at top six. I guess it was fourth and sixth. Um, so this is like usually the weekend where I, where I, where I have a bunch going on personally, and then I also end up doing well. So hopefully we can translate that to the whole community sheets. How are you doing? How'd you do last night? And, uh, yeah, what's been going on lately with you? Doing good. So, so this was, this was really interesting last night. So I had, um, I was, I went with the a, a Griffin at 3,500 in the early, in the early game. I sold you um, a little bit on him, huh? Expecting him, yeah, expecting him to be like, you know, 40% owned or something like that. Um, he ended up going off in the big one, 4% owned. And at halftime, he had zero fantasy points or something like that. Or, yeah, or the in the first quarter or whatever. So anyway, he ended up doing okay. And then I was really starting to do well with some with some of the guys in the lineup. And 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 Mo Bamba, he kind of busted. But I had like Towns and, and, and Bam like kind of together. And Shay, and they were really killing it. And I was like in first place, going back and forth, oh. first, second, and third. Oh. And I saw a hundred thousand, fifty thousand, twenty thousand. And then I was sweating like the end of this freaking Miami game, where one guy had like Lowry, and I had Bam and 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 Towns, and then someone had Towns, something else. And and I'm like, I just need Towns to score like seven fantasy points or whatever. And then Towns freaking fouled out with like two minutes and going, oh. so freaking oh. tilting. And then I'm sitting here, my man, it sucks. It sucks. I was so tilt tilted. And then I looked at my lineup and I looked, okay, let me see who's who's in the lobby that can get me. Totally forgot there was a whole other game to be played. <laughs> oh, you forgot about the 730, the 1030 game. <laughs> yeah. So I got all into this freaking sweat, like right down the stretch. And I'm like, boy, it's it's not taking much to win this thing. What the hell? But and I got all pumped up and then I was all on tilt. And oh my God, I lost first because freaking cat. Oh, third or fourth is going to be good enough. And I've never checked the lobby and see if anybody's might beat me for fourth. And then I saw like all the people with all the other game. Like, oops. Oh, that's so, hilarious. And I ended, up, I ended up cashing anyway. I got like 35th or something like that. But it, it was kind of funny, though. I was going to go into the Discord and not wine, but I was going to get everybody juice for a live sweat and all that. And it was so funny. Did anyway, that, that was my night last night. So I ended up, I ended up doing okay, actually. But um, but it was, it was, uh, it was like a sweat that wasn't. Like an actual sweat. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, man. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that it wasn't an actual one because those are really frustrating yeah. to lose. Um, yeah. All right, let's get into it. We've got a four gamer tonight. A uh, reminder: it's a seven thirty start time. Um, yes. I'm unlikely to be there for live. I'm gonna. Try yeah, so to I'm do. going to. I'll do it a little later. Then I'll go in like maybe six thirty, six forty five, or something like that. Okay. All right, sounds good. Well, uh, let's pull up your screen and we'll go game by game. And uh, yeah, the, 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 the big the big news, by the way, um, so far, is that Ja was actually upgraded to questionable. Oh, that yeah. was he. In fact, I actually didn't. I actually don't have that in my notes yet. So, yeah, um, that's obviously a big deal, and it's after the Philly game starts, which has all the value, and. It's possible that that actually jaw thing could be a game time, a true game time decision. So, for a little four game slate, there's a little bit of a uh, little no, bit no. of annoyance in there. But but I don't know. It'd be uh, um, I, that's that's the big news that I that I figured I would contribute. Yeah, well, that's definitely important. Um, I, I, as of right now, I actually have him presumed as in. I think that when you get, I mean, it, it's sort of what we have to do, right? Like. It's only a half after the first game, but as of this moment, assuming that the the, the, the slate was going to lock right now, in fact, did I? Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, yeah, I, I think mean, you should, should assume he's in at the moment. Um, well, this is the first time of a back to back, though, so I don't know. It, it's an interesting one, but if 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 you get upgraded in the NBA, they tend yeah. to tend to stick with with those things. When they get downgraded, they almost always don't play unless they're like one of two guys. But if they don't. Um, so yeah, that is a big piece of news. So we'll get into that one. Uh, but let's start off with Brooklyn and Philly. Uh, you know, everybody's favorite guy in the world to play is going to be, uh, you know, we don't have him tonight. So 
what are we going to do with Phil Sheets? What are you looking at with Philly and Kyrie being back and all this stuff? Um, hard for me to have a lot of interest in the Nets because of Kyrie being back. Where do you stand on the Philly side, though, with 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 no Embiid? Well, I presume Milton's the most popular player on the slate, I, I would imagine. Um, he certainly looks like a really, really strong player. Yeah, no Maxi either, by the way. Sorry, I should Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No Harden, no Maxi, no Embiid, no nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, uh, definitely like that. And then um, DeAnthony Melton, kind of like further down the list, I guess. And then do we still is, – is Tobias Harris still on the team? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, we, we used to like always kind of like – he always used to show up as a great play when Embiid was out and like never got there. Um, I mean, 7,800 is not like – Yeah, know. I mean, when is he going to – when is he going to be like 4,800 or something like that? Yeah. And then I could probably play him. But it's weird that with all these guys out, that Milton's really the only guy I feel like I have to have. Um, and on the Brooklyn side, um, yeah, if Kyrie is back, it makes Durant a little less of a uh, a little less of a good play. But this is a with Ja maybe out or maybe not is a real lack of of points on the slate. Um, you know, I have Durant as the top projected player right now at 49, which is like nothing. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and then Booker right behind him. And then maybe, you know, LeBron or whatever. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, if, if Durant plays, even with Kyrie, I mean, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe you're supposed to take these raw points. I'm not sure. Um, but overall, I think Milton's a really, really strong play. And, and the rest seem like kind of fishy, actually. Sort of where I'm at as well. I'm really having a hard time. Um uh... I think Paul Reed is in play. Ooh. Um, but you really don't need to play big. So his minutes, I feel like, are a little bit in flux. Uh, I think that a guy who hasn't really played much this year might end up getting some minutes tonight, and that's Cork Maz. Um, I have a story about uh about about Georges Nyang, who who uh apparently is 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 linked up to somebody I know. Uh, um uh, but I don't really want to pay forty six hundred for him. So it it really is tough, and and they price the other guys up who they should. Uh, I don't I don't have any problem if you want to play Daniel House, but it's not the most fun roster in the world. Same with PJ Tucker. It's really I think going to be Milton, Melton, and then some Harris for me, but mostly Milton and Melton. And I think you can play Milton and Melton together here. Um, a good pace game, all that stuff. I would like to give a little little nod out to Ben Simmons has looked like a completely different guy. Yes. Um. And and it's what we sort of know he can be. So I think on the other side, I actually think he's he's probably my preferred play. And I think that they're figuring out how to use him, which it shouldn't have been that hard. And he's also such a head case. I don't know whether it's his fault sometimes or the coaching staffs, but it's very strange that it took them this long to figure out sort of how to unlock him, basically. Um, you know, you have him play, have him play defense, have him bring the ball up, control the ball in the short roll. You have him setting up you guys for threes or guys cutting to the basket. It's pretty basic, um, and in the last couple of games, they've sort of unlocked something with him. And going back to Philly, we should probably at least note that there's something there. You know what I mean? Whether that means an extra five minutes on the court so he can get his triple-double or something like that, I don't know. Um, but, I, but I'm definitely on the side of giving Ben Simmons a shot. And it's probably also worth it to mention that Royce O'Neal has been really good on us. Like this, just in general, he's a guy who we used to have in our head as, oh, well, he has a good game, he gets you 25. He's, he's got more of a ceiling with this Nets team than that, and they've used him more offensively. Now he does get a knockdown with Kyrie, but still put up 33 in the last game. Um, so so I, I have those guys as more fringy, but I do think Simmons is, is a guy who I probably end up prioritizing by the end of the day. I have Nicholas Claxton as questionable. Um, I, have, I have him as out as of right now. Oh, no, I'm, okay. sorry, I'm sorry. I have him as in. I have him as in, but he just doesn't – he's not start. He's not starting anymore, we're presuming. Yeah, I have him as questionable. Um and also, I have Watanabe is questionable. Um, if both of them are out, then then we got weird stuff. You know, Mark is Markeith Morris get to play? Oh, I don't think you want to get that weird. They've got thirty bodies. Okay. Um, like maybe. I mean, <laughs> that's the truth. Is uh, I shouldn't write discard that so quickly. Uh, maybe, may, maybe that maybe that actually wouldn't be the worst idea. Uh, absolutely no reason to have any size on the court. So they don't need to play a big guy. Um, all the other guys are, you know, at this point sort of ahead of, ahead of him, but yeah, I guess if Watanabe and Claxton are out, really what it does is make Seth Curry a better play and he's already in play as it is. Um, 
But right now in this game, for me, the priorities wise, it's Milton, Melton, and, and Simmons as my as my guys. I'll, I'll decide whether I need to play Durant or Kyrie any later, a little later. Is it possible that they just sit Simmons because they don't want him to deal with the the, the, the you know take him off of his little hot thing? No, they're not going to do. No, it. no, no. He's finally playing well. <laughs> but he's going into Philly. I mean, he's you want to talk about he'll he'll have the worst crowd response of anybody's had in like five years tonight. And the crowd's got nothing else to do with all their their starters not playing. It's true. <laughs> this is what this is going to be the Ben Simmons taunting night. Right. Um, all right. Let's move over to uh, to Sacramento, Memphis, and obviously the jaw news is the most important. For what it's worth, I will point out that Memphis is only a one and a half point favorite, and and Sacramento's been playing really well. So you could try to attribute it to whatever you want, but jaw playing is is kind of a big deal here. Um, she, let's, let's assume Jaws in. What, what, what do you? How do you have this game prioritized? Because I think you're going to want to get a lot of different pieces here in this uh, high paced environment. Yeah, um, I, I always like uh, the two main guys from Sacramento, that being Sabonis and Fox. Um, and uh, if Ja plays, it's kind of hard to not play him. Um, I, I would be a little worried uh, on the front end of a back to back. Coming off kind of, you know, he's, he's, he's a little banged up. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I would be worried a little bit uh, about about minutes uh, from him uh, just because of what I just said. But it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a low slate, you know, so maybe maybe that maybe that overcomes that. I mean, Sacramento, they're, they're still like legit track meet, the track meet potential. So uh, if job plays. Yeah, I think obviously what's more, I guess, interesting is if Jot didn't play, then you get to decide whether you want to play Tyus Jones and you get to decide also whether you want to play, I don't know, other guys like uh, Dylan Brooks. I don't know. Uh, boy, nobody's really looks that great, though. Uh, Brandon Clark, maybe? So, uh, I what mean, do, what, what do you think? He's going to have a monster game. And, 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 and Dylan Brooks shot the ball 30 times the other night without Jot. <laughs> like, that's yeah, hard. You don't see that many guys with 30 field goal attempts very often. So even at the elevated price price hikes, I, I think those guys are there. And also, you do have Jaron Jackson. Jaron Jackson just put up 52 in 24 minutes the other day. This guy can put up a ton in a hurry. Um, he also can have the dud games, but he's probably not playing more than 24 to 20. I think that he could get – maybe you could see him play 28 in a game, but I think more likely you're going to see in that 24 range. The guy who actually gets the biggest boost if Ja was out – Usually, or, or historically, like, or what, what, sorry, one of the biggest boosts, <laughs> actually Steven Adams, who wow. already is in play at his price. Um, they do, because he, I mean, he does get assists, he gets rebounds. They tend to keep, you know, he sort of, you know, keeps everything calm. So he's got a big size advantage. So I, I liked, I like Steven Adams anyway, a little bit. Um, if Jaw's out, I think that I might even give him a little bit of a boost, which seems like a weird thing to do, but I, I think it actually makes a little bit of sense. They do have a little more depth in the front court this year than they, have had in previous years now with Jaron Jackson back. But I think that the main play for me here is Keegan Murray. Uh, it's, it's good value just in the sense that he's going to play 30 plus minutes. He's a rookie. There's a wide range of outcomes in rookies, but with 4,400 and 30 plus minutes, really hard not to like Keegan Murray. I have, I think you play one of Fox or Sabonis. You could play both of them if you wanted to really go ahead and stack the hell out of this game, but I probably will play one of them leaning a little bit Fox at, at the moment. Um, the bonus because he won't take Adams away from the baskets. He's not shooting threes anymore. Has me a little bit less interested, but I'm always interested in Sabonis. So I, I like both of them. I just have a little more interest in Fox. Um, and then if Jaw plays, he's probably my favorite spend up on the slate. I think he is my favorite spend up on the slate. So it's going to be Jaw, Keegan Murray as my my priorities, and then I'm mixing in some Adams, one of Fox or Sabonis. Uh, if I can get there, I, I do like this game quite a bit. And I think that taking a shot on Malik Monk is always viable just because he's, you know, he can shoot himself into 30 minutes and 40 fantasy points and he's going to probably be overlooked uh, at 5,100. So that's where I'm at on this one. Um, you know, again, reserve the right to change my mind later and hopefully I can make at least some of the live, but I'll, I'll do my best. I just don't know if it's going to happen. All right. Denver and Detroit. Uh, the first thing that sort of stands out to me, even without, you know, Jokic and Murray, it's just really weird to see the Detroit at a road game in a place like Denver as only five point underdogs. I, it's just sort of like a little bit shocking, you know what I mean? Just to just, just visually to, to get there with that said, um, 
I, I think we, you know, you're, you're going to want pieces of the Denver thing. I, do you need to play DeAndre Jordan here? Um, I, I, I know he sort of became like a little bit out of play for us the other day. And then he ended up, you know, like because of all the other value. And then he ended up putting up 32 fantasy points. They're playing in minutes. You don't really need to play big against Detroit. They don't really have that kind of size, especially with, with Isaiah Stewart out, but he's going to show up from a point per dollar thing as being a really good play. I'll put him on my list for now. I would rather avoid it if you want to know the truth. Um, and I will just, uh, just keep doing the same exact thing. I will play Michael Porter Jr. If Aaron Gordon plays, I will mix him in. I will play Bones Highland, even at 6,700. And I will play some Bruce Brown at 6K. I think all of those guys are really, really in play against a really bad defense. And I don't think you're going to get a huge ownership discount on any of them. Maybe you could say KCP because of the usage has to go somewhere and he's 4,700 and he's the only one who won't be owned. But that's all I got to that. The, in terms of the value, I, I think on the other side, Diallo is in play, but always a nervous thing just because he, he doesn't get the minutes, but he's very productive in his minutes. Um, sort of like Bagley. And uh, I, I like one of Bagley or Duran. I think one of those guys gets there today. And Killian Hayes, who doesn't project well uh, at 5K, I just noticed that he's been a part of like every winning lineup I've looked at lately by just being the that weird value that kind of helps. He only put a 21 the other night, so I guess not every night, but he did have 40 the game before that against the Lakers. Um, a bunch of guys who are in play, but I don't feel like I know which one to latch myself to on the Detroit side. And it seems like we should like somebody with no with no Cade here and no Stewart. But I'm having trouble with it outside of uh, I think Bagley with Bagley or Duran is probably my priority there. What are you doing with this one? Yeah, I mean, I got you know one, two, three, four, five, six. I have like seven Denver's out of my top twelve values on the slate. You know, uh, uh, all, literally all the guys that you mentioned, all the way straight down to Caldwell Pope being the last of them. You know what I mean? But he, I said, you know, he's fine as well. Um, I prefer. I mean, if I can get away with it. I prefer to fade DeAndre Jordan, but it's hard. So, so first of all, yeah. just to you know, to, to to reverse narrative street this 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 whole, this whole thing. Um, in fairness, I mean, look, he got the he, he got twenty and then thirty four minutes. There the, were the back to back games going back to Dallas, which I know he's been he's been waiting for. Yeah, um, absolutely. That's, that's where that, his career hit that, the slot. The skids. Yeah, so that's that's one thing. Um, the other thing is is so I, I prefer to. To not play him, but I, I will say this: if like Aaron Gordon is out again, the, for example, I know there's no Jeff Green already, and if and if he's out, I mean, I don't know how Jordan does not get. I mean, at least went 24, 26 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, what what is, what is Zeke Nanaji going to do? I mean, like, is he going to get? They don't need him. Yeah. Right. So so I, I don't. I think it's hard to fade Jordan if like Gordon is out. Like if Gordon is in, I might make I, I might invent like a narrative, not narrative. I might invent a game flow where they just play like Gordon at the five or something like that. Um, and then I could fade DeAndre Jordan. But if but if but if but if Gordon is out, um, I think that's a I think I think Jordan might be a rough fade. Um, I might do it anyway. But if you play a bunch of lineups, all I would say is if you're going to play DeAndre Jordan in a, in a, in a decent portion of lineups, I would, I would suggest at least like one out of five of those, you switch over to Zeke Nanaji or something, because yeah. I, I do think that, I don't think that the, the, the outcomes are that huge between difference between the two of them. When you factor in the $1,500 price gap, just want to throw that out there. Um, yeah. And, and the ownership gap, to say the least. Exactly. Um, yeah. uh, and as far as Detroit goes, yeah. I mean, the guys you mentioned, Diallo, I guess to be the top, uh, boy, oh boy, he's 3,200. What is he going to be? 40% owned? I mean, but I mean, he's like the eighth, he's like the eighth man. Okay. He hasn't played more than 20 minutes this season. Okay. Um, so that's, that, that, that's what you worry about with the Diallo. Yeah. Uh, and I, I like the Duran, um, uh, at 4,100, uh, instead of Bagley. I mean, well, obviously Bagley's a better, you know, yeah, you know, I mean, Detroit would like Bagley to be better. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm into playing one of those two. You know, um, that's not the worst idea in the world. And Killian Hayes, like you said, I, I, I had the same observation. Doesn't actually seem to be smashing, but but he does well enough to just sneak into those good lineups because of that price tag all the time. And he's uh, minutes, and, and you know what? We have to adjust that. Maybe he's a little bit better than. Like he's 21 years old, you know what I mean? These guys, 
get drafted when they're 19th and they're number six overall pick, seven overall pick or whatever. Guys have got him ranked number one. It takes some time sometimes. And and at least he's given us some games where we can feel good about him. I mean, in three out of his last six starts, he's put up over 33 fantasy points. Um, he's put up 40 ones. That's good enough of a reason, right? Yeah. There'll be a, uh, I think it's going to be a, a uh, I don't want to say a low scoring slate, but I, it, it seems weird to say with all this value available, but like all this value is not really getting you anywhere. You know what it's, I mean? Like yeah, what, what value are we talking about? Exactly. Right. Oh, like, like this, like the, like the Denver cheapos, like, like, like shake Milton. And you know what I mean? Um, like I'm saying it's not like you get like three K value that gets you the, gets you Giannis and Luca don't even exist on the slate. Um, so yeah, yeah um, I, I think that I, I think you're going to end up playing of these Denver guys. I think you're going to get a couple of them, uh, but like it's cool, like you said. I mean, none of these guys are three K. You know, you got you got Porter is a good play at fifty eight hundred. So I don't think people are going to pound on him. Who's going to really play? I'm not saying. I guess people are going to. I have Bruce Brown at forty percent projected ownership. He's been awesome. <laughs> yeah. He just every game he just gets there and like five X is probably good enough to do it tonight. Um, yeah. If Gordon is out, especially, I think he stands right. out. If Gordon is in, I still think he's interesting. And by the way, he got it. He got the you know a lot of that. He got the start and uh, ahead of Bones. Bones, of course, yeah. gets there no matter what off the bench anyway, so it doesn't really yeah. matter. Like I said, I don't mind. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not balking at this price on 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 him. I, I think I think Bones is completely in play at at 6700. I have no problem doing that off the bench even. It should I mean he just is such a high usage guy, especially if Gordon's out again. Um, anybody with everybody just gets like an extra bump with Gordon out. But the way I've got this game prioritized is um I actually am gonna try not to play Jordan, but again, if I he may end up making it in some lineups. But I like the uh my favorite plays are Michael Porter Jr. and or Highland. Um, I think that then you go Bruce Brown on the on the Denver side, but the only real priority right now is is Porter Jr. until we figure out about Gordon but I will probably play a minimum of two nuggets and I might have to mix in some KCP just based on the fact that he'll play minutes and they don't have um, in what should be a close game. And they don't, they just don't have a lot of else to go to. So even if he fails and shoots two for 11 again and puts up 20 fantasy points, I don't think he kills my lineup, but I think if he puts up 30, it's a really nice way to get a little different. Um, Killian Hayes. And then I, I just have one of these guys listed one of Killian Hayes, Bagley, Burks, uh, Jalen Duran, at least one of those guys and, and Diallo. But I think that Diallo is, is maybe worth the the best one worth speculating on. And I, for some reason, am not getting to Jaden Ivy. And that might be a mistake that I, that I reconsider later on today. Okay. All right. My Lakers uh, and Suns here. Lakers like to, played like, like two times in 10 games, by the way. Go ahead. So, so I would like to, uh, to say something about the Lakers. Um, They're better without LeBron. Well, I, well, all I want to say is this, and only because I've played him recently, low-key or maybe not low-key, Mr. Anthony Davis has been smashed. I mean, like, every which way from Sunday. He scored 65 fantasy points in his last game in, like, 25 minutes. Or, or was it 28 minutes? He just murdered everybody. He had 18 rebounds. Look at his last three games. 18 rebounds, 16 rebounds, 18 rebounds, 14 rebounds. And then, like... Two games go. Look at look at that line. Imagine the 18 20. rebounds were in 28 minutes because of the blowout. <laughs> he would have right, had like right. That's what I'm saying. And then like look at two games. Look at this line. 18 of 21 from the line. I mean, yeah, much more. He's, he's 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 the man. You know what I mean? It kind of sucks that the Lakers are bad. You know what I mean? But 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 he's he's, I I I, I in a weird way maybe on like a four game slate. You're supposed to root for LeBron to play and just play Anthony Davis anyway. You know, um, may, may, maybe that's the idea. Now, the other thing is, I don't know if you were following this because I think it was the weekend you were, I don't think you were following it, but but LeBron in his last game, they were announcing that he was going to be, if he played at all, it was going to be under on a minutes limit. Um, and he did play 32 minutes anyway. Um, and he had a yeah, pretty, pretty nice game. Been a while um, <laughs> What's that? Been a while since he played. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think that uh, I think you're supposed to play this game. I think you're supposed to play Booker and then um, and then play one of these dudes like either 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 Davis or LeBron. Even Listen, if, if one of them is out somehow, well, they're not. Like, what's the name? AD, AD is in. I mean, he's probable. He's playing. Um, but I think even if they both play, I think I don't know. It's, it's on a four game slate. I think it's 
I think you could do worse. So you play Booker, you play one one of those two guys, you sit on your butt and you root root for some of this other you know other value to bust maybe, um, mm-hmm. or 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 play the value. It's so that you can play Booker and and AD together or something like that. Um, and I don't know. That's that's my thoughts. Yeah, a whole bunch of speculative value on on Phoenix because I think there's a, like a wide range of outcomes for these guys. I actually think Tory Craig belongs in the conversation. Oh, there it is. He's, he's you know he's for, he's forty nine hundred. He's put up twenty nine thirty seven and twenty eight and twenty eight in his last four games. So he's been basically getting there. And five, like I said, five x today may be good enough to do it. Um, we've seen ceilings out of him before. And the Lakers defense doesn't uh, inspire confidence. Is that the nice way of saying it? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think you're playing one of Booker or, or Payne in every lineup. I really do. I don't think that yeah. you can mess around with it. Um, I, I just think that Booker's ceiling is just so immense. And then you see what happens. Booker doesn't get there and Payne puts up 47. You know what I mean? Right. Just, it, one of them are going to get there basically every time because they have all of the ball handling responsibilities between the two of them and all of the shot creation responsibilities. The one guy who I'll throw out there as a not going to project – project uh, as well and and it doesn't feel like the right play in a lot of ways and i like mikhail bridges as my sleeper guy here so bridges and, and craig are both probably going to be sub 10 percent or right around there and i think they're both really interesting to pair along with one of the the pain or bookers and would lebron come back on tonight i i think that he's everybody seems to think he's going to play but it's not his old chris buddy his old buddy chris paul on the other side they've now won three in a row without lebron um, I don't know. And even if LeBron plays, I do think taking some Davis, uh, as you were sort of alluding to just with a different burst of energy and all that is definitely worthwhile. The guys who we didn't talk about are, are the other two that I'm interested to see how they, how they play coming back because we've now got, uh, Thomas Bryant, who would be the starting center. And don't be surprised if Thomas Bryant starts tonight. And if LeBron's out, uh, that, that's one thing. And he's 3,400 and he is a good point per minute guy. Dennis Schroeder is the other one at 4,200 that if no LeBron, I would have some interest in. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to say for, to, to finish it out. I, I do like, um, I would give the edge to probably uh, Thomas Bryant as the, as the value play late and you hope things go your direction. And even if LeBron plays Thomas Bryant is still going to get close to his 20 minutes. Um, and even in 20 minutes, this guy can put up 30 fantasy points and not an ideal matchup. They're going to want to play some size. I don't think they're going to want to have Davis on eight the whole time. Um, I do think you're going to see a good amount of Thomas Bryan in this game. So, uh, priorities for the game book, one of Booker or Payne love one of Bridges or, or Craig as your low owned guy. I, I, I still can't seem to want to click the Deandre Ayton button, but certainly it's in play. Uh, Davis being my favorite Laker. And now with some other healthy bodies for the Lakers, maybe they can actually be competitive. Um, so Thomas Bryant and, uh, and, and Thomas Bryant or Schroeder are leading the way. So that's, those are my, uh, my, my value plays from the Lakers. And it's, it's really hard to know without LeBron, because if LeBron's out, I, all those guys like Schroeder and, and Bryant, I think they actually become like really good values. And I like that you can play this game because it's a late game. So I like the idea of delaying and seeing what happens. Cause you know, if we find out all of a sudden LeBron is out and it's, and it's, it's Thanksgiving week. So you get a lot of guys out these week for these, some of these games. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's not like the NFL where everybody wants to show out on Thanksgiving. The, the NBA is a little bit more, you get a lot of guys resting Thanksgiving week, especially. Right. Um, so to go through my priorities for the slate, Milton or Melton um, or both fine with me, Ben Simmons, jaw, uh, Keegan Murray, Devin Booker, um, one of the Detroit others, Diallo, Bagley, Duran, Burks, Jackson, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Killian Hayes, one of those guys, Bryant or Schroeder, Otto Porter Jr., period. Um, and then one of Gordon Brown or Bones Highland. And that's just sort of a rough outlook of, of what I'm prioritizing. I know it's early in the day, so we don't know what's going to happen yet, but that's what I've got. I'll be there probably like 6.30, 6.45 tonight, live, and uh, that'll do it. And if I can join for in any capacity, I will, I will make it. Sounds uh, good. Good luck, everybody. We'll see you guys tonight. Okay.